In this video, we're going to be talking about curve fitting using ease. And specifically, we're looking at an application where we have um, some observed data, which I'm showing here in the column Z. This might be something that you take from measurements or that's given to you in a data set. And you have two independent variables. It could be more, more than two. In this case, we'll just look at two. X and Y, independent variables. Um, and for each uh, corresponding value of those independent variables, we have a measurement. In this case, all I've done is taken the value of x and y, put some relatively simple function, which is a constant times the value of x to a power times the value of y to a power, and I've randomized it in some way. And the goal is we're going to try to get back out, solve back out for these constants using ease. In reality, of course, you don't know what the function looks like, but you might do some kind of dimensional analysis um, that lets you uh, sort out what, what the important terms are Okay, so let's look at ease. First, the, the first step in ease is to come in, and what we need to do is import our data into ease. So to do that, we're going to go to tables. We're going to have a new lookup table. Let's call this ta uh, table data, and it's not important now what the rows and columns are. But we create our new table, and you can see it's got uh, columns and rows, and what you want to do now is come back to your data here, the actual data you're going to import. We're going to copy all three columns and every value, including the unit specifier that I have in here. So we'll copy this in Excel and go back to Ease. Um, you can see now after we've, we've selected the copy, there's this Paste Special option. If this doesn't show up, it's likely that you don't have anything in your computer's clipboard. So we do, we've, we've copied from Excel, and we're going to click Paste Special. So the thing that pops up here is some information that uh, is needed to, to figure out how to actually paste this in. So we're pasting column names, units, and data, so we'll click that one, and we'll click OK. And now you can see um, the data comes in and it's uh, reshaped the table to match the incoming data. So the next step is we need to actually get the data into a useful format. And what we want to do is uh, put the data in arrays. So we're going to start by specifying the number of rows, and that's in this case 20, right? There's 20 data points. Um, and then I'm going to get these into array variables. And to do that, we're going to use a duplicate function. So we're going to go duplicate i from 1 to n rows. And then we're going to assign array variables for each um, thing that we care about. So here, xi is equal to, we need to use the lookup function. So you can look at the help menu for ease to get this. Otherwise, you can just uh, follow along here, and it's called lookup. And the function asks for the table name, which is data. It asks for the row number, which is i. Right? We're duplicating from i for each row. And then it's going to ask for the variable name. In this case, that variable name is x. Let's do the same thing for the other variables. OK, one thing that we want to be careful about here is we're going to have different um, z values. We're going to have the value we, we used in our observation, and then we're going to have to predict this value as well for our correlation. So let's call this z observed, just to be clear. And then we'll end our duplicate loop. So at this point, if you hit solve, we should be able to get back in our array variables. If we go to Windows Arrays or just hit Control y we can see the same data that we entered in to the lookup table. It's the same data. So going back to our equation windows, what we want to do now is uh, we're, we're trying to get to a correlation. We're, we're trying to get to the ability to predict z based on just x and y. So let's first write an equation for our predicted values. Okay, so let's call this z correlation, which is going to have index i. Uh, and that's going to be equal to some function that we decide. So the form of this function is really up to you, and this is kind of the, the key part of regression analysis, is figuring out what the function is going to look like. Um, but let's say uh, we, we kind of know what we're going for here. So let's say it's some constant, a0, times the value of x to some power, which we'll call a1. And let's multiply that by y to some power a2. Right? This is the, the functional form that, uh, through whatever means we decide, is appropriate. Um, if you're just doing, say, a polynomial, you'd enter in a polynomial with the constants multiplying each term. Okay, so now we should be able to predict z based on 
a, the, the values of a1, a0, a2, except we don't know what those are. So ultimately the point here is to get to, uh, to, to solve for those values. To start off, let's just give some you know, initial guesses. Right? These could be any value you think is appropriate. But now if we solve this, we should actually be able to um, get a prediction. Let's move this over. So we have our correlation value uh, versus our observed value. And you can see there's error involved here. Right? Th these are not quite correct. Um, and so what we, knew, we do need to quantify that error. Okay, so let's calculate the error here for each uh, value. So the error at each value i is going to be equal to um, the absolute value of the difference in the two measurements. So let's say z uh, correlation minus z observed. Uh, and let's divide that by, let's say, the observed value. Right, so this is normalized error. Now, if you have an uh, observed value that's zero, obviously you don't want to divide by zero. Your definition of error can, can vary. I'm just doing normalized error here. Okay, so now we, we look at our array variables, and we should see that there's an error calculation. We're trying to minimize the total error, uh, the cumulative error in this function. So let's make a new variable that does uh, that calculates what that value is. So we'll call that error total. And that's going to be the sum of error uh, i for i in the range of 1 to n rows. All right, so now we should see that we have, in fact, a calculated error value. All right, the next step is um, kind of where ease is really handy uh, in, in figuring out how to minimize this error. We're just trying to minimize this error. We're trying to find values a0, a1, and a2 that minimize this value. So what ease has available is a minim minimization and maximization function, basically optimization. So if you go to calculate min max um, and click that, you're going to get that uh, dialog to pop up. However, before you do that, um, if we were to do this now, we see that there's a problem. There's a number of degrees of freedom is zero. It's not possible to optimize. So what we actually need to do is remove anything from our equation window that we're going to let the min-max function manipulate. So let's go ahead and comment this out, go back to our min-max, and then the dialog pops up. Or you may see initially that there's array variable, all the array values are shown. Uh, we'll just unselect that to get to what we want. So we're trying to minimize the total error, and the thing that we want to manipulate are independent variables in this case, are the, the coefficients in the polynomial, or, the, or whatever function that we have, the coefficients in the regression function. Here we have a0, a1, and a2. Those are our unknown coefficients. And we're trying to minimize the error by manipulating those things, so we select those. OK, you have different options for, for what to choose for a minimization method. Uh, I find the variable metric method, the default, is pretty good. Um, you do want to make sure that you have enough function calls available and enough, uh, a small enough tolerance that you're not uh, converging too early. So I, uh, for this problem, decided 4,000 was enough, and I changed the default from 1e to the minus 4th to 1e to the minus 6th. Right, so we, we uh, decreased our tolerance a little to make sure we really can converge. We also need to set bounds for these variables. Okay, so we'll come in here. Um, we can't have infinity in the bounds, so we need to choose some values. Uh, in this case, I know physically the problem as it's set up and the data that's, that's shown, we can't have any coefficients that are less than zero. So let's pick zero for all of those. And then for this particular problem, I have to make my best guess of what the upper value is going to be. So I'm going to say 10 for each of these. OK, and click OK. Now when I click OK here, it's going to solve for the values that minimize the error. All right, so Ease has now decided after 600 plus iterations um, that the best it can do is these values of A, okay, A0, A1, and A2. So now go to the solution and you'll see these values show up. What we want is to actually put these as our input, right? So I'm going to select all of them, control C to copy, and then go back to my uh, equations window and actually drop those in here with control V for paste. So now I've got my function that's actually 
um, formulated in terms of our minimized error coefficients. And if I solve this, I'm going to see my error, my total error is much lower than it, than it was before, right? before we were in the hundreds for error. Um, and if we want to actually verify how good our solution is, we can plot out the, the data. So let's create a new plot. And we're going to go to our arrays table where, where the output is. And let's plot this as a function of x. So let's plot the correlation. And let's plot the observed values as a function of x. Let's add a legend. And let's do automatic update. All right. And then uh, let's not do a line. And let's just do symbols instead. Okay. So we are plotting z. And you can see, let's see, look, look at our observed values. So observed, let's make those... Uh, solid um, and maybe a little larger and then we have the correlation um, that's behind that so let's make that I don't know red okay so here we see observed blue data and then our correlation is kind of splitting the difference there right it's, it's, it's showing that we actually did a pretty good job and if we look again at, at the values right a0 a1 and a2 those should be pretty close to the formula that we used for z, right? So a0 was 0.55, 5, a1 was 0.25, and a2 was 0.75. And in fact, we did find something that's pretty close, right? So that's how you do multiple regression, uh, curve fitting and ease for multiple, multiple dimensions.